everybody, this is Gilby Clark, and you're watching Metal Sickness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm. Uh, it's really weird. People that know me mm. think I'm loud, okay? But I'm really fairly quiet and kept to myself. Whenever I'm on the road, I kind of keep to myself. I, I like being by myself. When I, I like being in the hotel, mm. on the computer, or, or whatever and stuff. So I am definitely a little more private. I'm, I'm terrible with Facebook and Twitter. I'm very mm. slow. But uh, that's not to say that I don't like people. I, I like people. I get along with people. It's just some people are a little more reserved than other people. Okay. Yeah, I did. That's, did. That is a 100% true story. But yeah. why? <laughs> well, you got to ask Duff that. He's the one who did it. I, I just gave up a shirt. I got a, a car out of it. Well, it, what happened was we before we left for Japan... Uh, I drove Duff to a rehearsal one day, you know, and I have a 65 Mustang, which I still have to this day. But at that point, it was a little rickety, you know, is you know, kind of, you know, blah, 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 you know, it wasn't uh, running so well. And he goes, dude, this car is freaking dangerous, you know. And I would joke around with him and go, well, then fucking buy me a new car. I go, not like I can, you know, get a new car. And, and he would laugh. But when we did Japan, he was, uh, things were going really, really well. We sold out three nights. And I have this great um, black mesh punk rock shirt that I had. And he used to try to uh, steal it from me all the time. He goes, let me buy your shirt. I go, no, I'm wearing it today. He goes, no, let me buy your shirt. And I wouldn't, he goes, so anyway, he came up to me one day and he goes, you know what? I'm going to get a new vet and I'm going to give you my vet. I mean, my vet is brand new. He goes, but one condition, what's that? He goes, for the shirt, a vet for a shirt. And I go, sounds good to me. You can have it. <laughs> and so I honestly traded a shirt for a Corvette. It's true. Um, well, I mean, I'd love to be remembered for what I've done. You know, I'm a, I'm a guitar player first and foremost. Um, you know, uh, I think that uh, I've made some good records. Um, I think I've kept my integrity all these years, you know. Um, I just, uh, you know, want to be remembered for what I've done. You know, I've, Guns N' Roses was a part of my life, but it's not my life, you know. Um, it was a, a successful part. But, you know, I, to me, the success is being able to earn a living you know, since I was 16 years old by playing guitar. You know, this yeah. is how I pay my bills. Mm. We, when we did the TV show, for us, it was really about the band. You know, myself, Tommy, and Jason were really excited about getting the band together. The TV show was just a way for us to look around and find a singer. Mm -hmm. You know, it, even for guys like us, you, you can't just go, oh, let's find a singer, you know? Um, all the good singers are in bands and they're busy. Mm -hmm. So we thought that we would try and look throughout the world to find this and the TV show came along. So um, we were happy. I, I thought Lucas did a great job on the record, you know, when we picked them from the show. Uh, after the show, we did do a tour. We did a full US tour, went down to Australia and, and everything. But it was really clear that uh, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't good enough, you know? It, it happened so fast that I don't think that we really had time to develop a, a, a band sound, you know, like play together. And it's really hard when you have three guys that are successful to get together and just start a new band. Like it's in the garage, it's impossible, you know? And I think that because of that, it was something that wasn't gonna last because after doing the shows, I didn't want to do it anymore, you know? I, I didn't like, uh, you know, Lucas's commitment, you know? And, uh, you know, Tommy was still in Motley Crue. He's still DJing and everything. So, you know, to me, I gave up everything to, to do that band. And I wanted to see the same from everybody else. That's why you are in solo project now. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, I got to tell you, uh, no one in the band picked the name Supernova. Okay. Uh, Mark Burnett, the producer, picked it. When we did the show, 
he was saying, look, I think it's a great name, Supernova. And the first thing I said is, you know there's a band called Supernova. And he goes, it doesn't matter, we own the name. <laughs> and so, you know, we all sat there and went, okay. <laughs> and so we had to change it to Rockstar Supernova for legal reasons. There was yeah. a band called Supernova. I knew it, but, you know, sometimes people don't listen to you. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it's over, right? Yeah, we're not doing it anymore. You know, okay. we, we, we gave it a shot. You know, we made a record. We did a tour. It didn't work. You know, it, uh, you know, like I said, you know, Tommy's still in Motley Crue. You know, Jason is doing whatever okay. he is. It, it's, it's not together anymore. Okay. Well, here's my message, man. Just keep rocking and rolling, man. We got to keep rock music alive. I'm not saying it's dead because it's not. But we have to keep it alive. We have to keep the, the young generation involved. You know, we need you guys to have bands. You know, we need new bands. We need you to support the old bands. Just keep it alive, that's all. Thank you very much, Gidby. You're welcome very much.